Thank you so much for the nice invitation, for the kind words. I'm really happy to be here, ladies and gentlemen. It's now after three years that you meet in presence uh, for the Big Data AI Summit here in Berlin. This is really great news uh, because even for such a digital community as you are, it's important to meet in person because even up to our best knowledge, uh, nothing replaces the direct interaction, maybe in future, but not as of today. As I see so many people standing, I see from here quite many free seats, so please feel free to take one. So at the same time, I, we heard already about it, we, we all know we meet in difficult times. There's a war in Ukraine, the urgent need to transform our energy systems and the economy, a rising inflation, a summer that has drastically shown what climate change means, and a pandemic which still do not seem to be fully checked off. So the list of challenges is long, maybe too long, at least so long as we couldn't imagine quite some years ago. So however, what we must not do in such times is to relegate dig digitalization and digital technologies to the sidelines, to see it just as a nice pursuit for a happier time. It's not. I'm really convinced, and I think you are also convinced, that not only big data and AI, but digital technologies in general are now more important than ever. Indeed, they are an important element for solutions to the current problems. A sustainable energy system must involve smart grids, which consistently balance supply and demand. At the same time, we must become more energy and resource efficient using, using big data, AI, digital twins, simulation modeling, digital control, and a recent study really shows that from the 169 specific targets underlying the 17 sustainable development goals of the UN, 134 may benefit from AI. And I really could continue this list much further. New and especially digital technologies, I'm convinced, remain to be an important key to our future. And what the past months have also shown us, we need to be able to design, develop, produce, secure, validate and verify these technologies in line with our democratic values. We need technological sovereignty. We have seen the dire consequences of unilit literal dependence, lateral, unilateral dependencies. And we have experienced several times that not all nations and people see the world alike. These system conflicts also pervade the development of technologies and technological intensive products. To compete, we need our own competencies. And we need the ability to cooperate on eye level, not only with like-minded partners, but also beyond. And for Germany and Europe, this means that we need to expand our efforts further to achieve and extend sovereignty in key technologies. Even if money is getting tight, our support for research and development of new technologies, of course, including AI and data, would be the wrong item to economize. So, of course, we all know technological sovereignty not only sounds good, but also reads good on paper. The key question is how to come to it, how we can achieve it in practice. Fortunately, now we have a good examples, but does AI belong to it? 
We have the German AI strategy, which was published in 2018. It said, ambitious goal to make Germany and Europe a leading center for AI and to foster a responsible development and use of AI serving the good of society. Yesterday, the report published by Bitcom showed uh, that there is still a long way to go, in particular in industry. But I'm happy to tell you some success stories uh, from the research and development side. So we have established now overall six AI centers of excellence, which receive long-term funding since this year. This network is really unique in the world, and it offers optimal conditions for internationally competitive research and for attracting the best scientists worldwide. Second, we have managed to create and staff more than 100 additional AI professorships, situated across Germany, and one third of them are really recruited from abroad, which um, follows the point before. Third, we have started many initiatives to educate and recruit young people for AI. For example, there is already um, high demand for young female AI researchers we support with our initiative. They're really cool, interesting teams uh, developing new solutions. Fourth, we have initiated various measures to foster the transfer of AI technologies into various application fields like health or circular economy as well as into small and medium-sized companies. And first, uh, fifth, we have considerably enhanced our AI infrastructure. That includes not only the exascale supercomputer, which is upcoming first to be installed in Europe, um, we also will shortly start so-called AI service centers, which improve the AI access to AI technologies, in particular for SMEs. I need to hurry up. And finally, we have fostered the international cooperation with like-minded partners like France, Japan, or Canada. And two weeks ago, we started the AI Grid, which uh, will help to connect young AI researchers across Europe. In addition to these achievements, there is um, the European community with considerable progress in developing an appropriate legal framework for AI. We mentioned already the AI Act, the Data Act. We value a lot on the risk-based approach because uh, such a legal framework uh, gives uh, guidance and a framework um, and is, as such, an important element uh, for technological sovereignty. But we still see considerable potential to improve the current proposal towards providing more support to innovation. So I skip a little and I come to my call to action for you. Uh, as we all see, there is a good way that we uh, took already together, but there's also still a long way to go. And um, we only can achieve our ambitious goal together, because at the end, what counts are the products and services which are provided via the industry to the people in our society. So therefore, I want to call upon you, please get more involved, use uh, the AI results, connect with the AI centers, the service centers and the competence centers, and try to talk, to meet, to work together with the AI researchers, where a lot of them contribute to very practical applied solutions based on AI. Because that's the only way to transform the excellent research we have in Germany into value for the society. 
that is so important. Without it, we cannot uh, make an AI system, an e ecosystem, I should say, which really addresses our society needs. So let us um, work together. I can say that we will continue our support for big data, and I like to say smart data and AI, and I count on you to do it likewise. Thank you very much, and have a nice conference. Just uh, maybe if I thank you very much for, for, for giving these insights and all these um, really impressive numbers on what has already been done on the research side in, in Germany to build up a, an ecosystem of, of excellence, really, on, on, on AI. But um, you mentioned it. Um, it's crucial that we can also transfer for this mm -hmm. knowledge into application in, 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 in enterprises to make products out of it, service out of, services out of it, and, and use it. And, and, and my question to you would be, what, are there any thoughts on, on maybe new ways of achieving this? Because in, in, I know that in your house and also the, the Ministry of Economics, you're working on, on, on new ideas also mm -hmm. on, on how to, to simplify that transfer, make it, make it easier. What, what else can we do together maybe to, yeah. to, to, to get that transfer done? <laughs> yeah, thank you for that uh, very important question. Um, well, um, to, to take you with, along with our approach, of course, we are in the push mode. We try to support, develop, engage research into AI and data, and then uh, we hope for a pull uh, from your side to improve it. And in between or along that, uh, we have to fill in the innovation pipeline from research uh, to industry and widespread use in society. And therefore, in between BMBF and BMWK, we, for example, discuss how to establish uh, hubs, which are uh, with um, industrial partners led by the industry to improve uh, the take up of AI solutions, for example, in health and care or circular economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we often try to find new ways uh, to improve the take up. We uh, coined last uh, time the Agency for Innovation with Disruptive uh, Innovation Potential, Sprint. We are up to develop a new agency which takes another approach from more applied science to uh, improve um, the transfer. And if you are or if you have other good proposals, please let us know, because we really try to improve every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a very, very important thought. We have to evaluate how, how uh, well these, these measures work in practice, and, and if, if they fulfill the actual uh, purpose that they were uh, made for. So thank you ve very much for your, also your interest in, in uh, the event. And um, we are always happy to exchange further on these things. I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, there are many, many ideas around uh, here uh, on, on how to um, get this transfer going. And um, yeah, so we, we, I think we jump right into the, program of today. <laughs> uh, thank you very thank much, you. Professor Schieferdecker.